and as we meet to share together in this short service of readings and prayers. We begin by hearing these words from Psalm 115, the 115th Psalm. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for your love, for your faithfulness. Why should the nations ask, where then is their God? Our God is high in heaven. He does whatever he wills. Their idols are silver and gold, made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nostrils but cannot smell. With their hands they cannot feel, with their feet they cannot walk, and no sound comes from their throats. Their makers become like them, and so do all who put their trust in them. But Israel trusts in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. The house of Aaron trusts in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. Those who fear the Lord trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. The Lord who has been mindful of us will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel, he will bless the house of Aaron. The Lord will bless those who fear him both high and low. May the Lord give you increase, both you and your children. You are blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to us. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, nor those who go down to the silent grave, but we, the living, shall bless the Lord now and for evermore. Praise the Lord. We bring our prayers to God. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, our Father, for this opportunity of sharing these few brief moments with you and with one another. We thank you that you are our God. It is you we worship. There is none other. We are all too mindful as to how easy it is to manufacture gods in our own image, to make idols, to shape them according to our likeness, that we might impose upon them our will. But that is not how it is. We come to worship you you are our God, it is you who has made us in your image. It is you who has made us fit for your purpose. It is you who would have us fulfill the destiny that you have for each one of us. It is you who alone to, we, to whom we can turn. And we thank you that you are not a God who remains far removed from us. Yes, you dwell high above the heavens, we appreciate that. Beyond the reach of our understanding, we acknowledge that. But you are not hidden from us. We thank you for Jesus, the one in and through whom you have made yourself known to us. Living amongst us is one of us, causing us to appreciate who you really are, what it is that is at the heart of God, the fact that you have love for us, each and every one of us. We thank you for him, for his demonstrating your love in such a way, selfless, self-giving, sacrificial love, nothing held back, your heart laid bare before the world in him at Calvary. But we thank you too that this love of which we speak cannot be constrained, not by any earthly power, not even death itself. You raised him from the dead, demonstrating that your love is a death 
life-defying love, a life-affirming love. As such, we can have confidence in knowing that you will allow nothing to come between us and you. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the one in and through whom you share yourself with us each moment of every day, constantly reminding us that we are loved by you. Constantly reminding us that you are part of our lives, part of every part of our lives. So we ask, O oh God, that you share this act of worship with us in and through that same spirit. Be our inspiration, be our guide, be the one who opens your heart to us. And in your own particular way, share yourself with each one and do this for Jesus sake Amen when we met in this way last Sunday we heard the story of how Jesus visited Cana in Galilee discovering that a royal official his son was ill and how Jesus was moved to heal the official's son on account of the faith that that man professed. How he was prepared to reach out to Jesus. We now read the next story that John records for us concerning Jesus' ministry. Chapter 5 of his Gospel. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now at the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem there is a pool whose Hebrew name is Bethesda. It has five colonnades and in them lay a great number of sick people, blind, lame and paralysed. Among them was a man who had been crippled for 38 years. Jesus saw him lying there and knowing that he had been ill a long time he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, he replied, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is disturbed. While I am getting there, someone else steps into the pool before me. Jesus answered, Stand up, take your bed and walk. The man recovered instantly and took up his bed and began to walk. We thank God for that simple miracle recorded in his word. The story of the royal official was of one who came and sought out Jesus. Here we have the story of someone who was not capable of seeking Jesus out. He was where he was. He didn't reach out to Jesus because he couldn't. But it was Jesus who reached out to him. It was Jesus who came and saw him and spoke to him and asked him a simple question. Do you want to get well? Well, the man could have been upset at that. Wasn't it obvious? 38 years he'd been there, desperately trying to get to the head of the queue, desperately trying to be the first one in the water, and in so doing secure the healing properties contained therein. Every time he tried, someone beat him to it. Do you want to get well? Of course I want to get well. Why do you think I put myself through this day after day after day? But the man didn't respond in such a violent manner. He simply told it as it was. An air of resignation. Well, it is as it is. I've got no one to help me. <laughs> How can it be possible? Jesus heals him. No need to struggle anymore. No need to desperately struggle trying to get into the water, no need 
to go through all that angst day after day, all that disappointment, no longer necessary. Jesus cut through all of that. Stand up, he said. Take up your bed and walk. And the man did as Jesus required of him. There's a sense in which Jesus walks the earth today. In and through the power of the Holy Spirit, that same power which saw him raised from the dead, the Spirit of the risen Christ, he is present in our world and he is moving amongst us and he is seeking us out. And he is confronting us. And he is saying to us, do you want to get well? Of course, that presupposes that we are prepared to acknowledge that there is that about us which needs to be cured. On another occasion, Jesus was noted for spending time with tax collectors and sinners. Why didn't he bother with respectable people? And his response on that occasion was to say, well, those who are sick, if they recognize the need of a doctor, then I can heal them. But if you're not prepared to acknowledge your need, then how can that need be met? I'm coming to those who realize they're in need. So yes, there is an arrogance about us which would turn our backs on Jesus and say, do we want to get well? We're well enough, thank you. We're doing well enough. And as surely as we turn our backs on him, there is a sense in which he would turn his back on us. And he would continue on until he finds those who are prepared to acknowledge, yes, they need to be made well. Not necessarily physical illness. Maybe nothing more yet, nothing less than the need to acknowledge our sinfulness and the requirement that it be forgiven. Acknowledging the hurt and the harm that's caused to us and to others by having done what we've done and not having it put right. And so this evening, the opportunity presents itself again. The risen Christ walks amongst us meets each one of us in turn and he says to us do you want to get well it's down to us now to find the courage and the humility to say yes and in the saying of yes God's promise to us is that we will be made well let's pray together And we do give you thanks, O oh God, for that sense we have of you being active in your world, present and active, your love-filled power, your power-filled love, moving amongst us, mighty and mysterious is its way. And we have that sense of you coming up to each one of us, as you did to that man all those years ago, and saying to us, do you want to be made well? In the quietness of the moment, O oh God, search our hearts. Cause us to be prepared to say yes, we want to be made well. The sickness of sin eats away at us, eating away from within, causing us much pain and hurt much anguish and despair. We need to be made well. We want to be made well. In the quietness of the moment, we confess our sin before God and ask that he would forgive us and in so doing grant that sense of healing that can only come when we know ourselves to be forgiven. 
We thank God for the healing process by which over time we find ourselves reconciled to God at one with him, at peace with him, in fellowship with him, and we be made well. And we pray for our world. Our world is a sin-sick world. There is much arrogance about it, fails to recognise its own demise, the damage it is doing to itself, the way it is destroying itself from deep within. Selfish self-centeredness pervades the world, lust for power, desperate search for wealth, prestige, influence, all done at the expense of the poor, the downtrodden and the dispossessed. We ask, O oh God, that you would impress yourself upon your world in such a way that you would tear down the thrones of the mighty and that you would lift up the poor, that they might be exalted in your presence. We want our world to be made well, and only you can do this. To that end, we place our world in your hands and ask you to bless it, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this short act of worship. we here again the same time next Sunday. But until then, May God bless us all.